Hey everybody, Donnie B. Learn Pro Recording. Welcome in. Hey, today I've got a thing I want to share with you. One of the modules, one of the bonus modules from the Learn Pro Recording Audio Engineering 101 course. This, uh, this exercise, this bonus module is all about helping you build your studio and grow your studio. Uh, basically, it's called the studio building exercise. I'm going to put a link to the PDF down here in the in the description of the YouTube video. Uh, I want you to download that. Go right now and download that and have that ready. Print it out. Have it there. So you can take your time on this exercise. Now, this isn't something you got to do in the next 10 minutes. I want you to really take your time. I'm going to go over some of the points with you, but I really want you to just take your time with that, okay? Uh, I'll be putting these points up on the screen as we go through them. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm gonna give you $150,000 budget to build your studio, okay? Uh, I know it sounds like a lot of money, man, but when you start buying studio equipment, dude, that, that $150,000 goes quick. Um, there's a lot that you need to think about going into your studio, and that's what this exercise is about, to teach you, to show you, and guide you into understanding what it is you need and what it is you want in your studio. Uh, whether you're building a home studio or a commercial studio is irrelevant. Uh, there are some great home studios that uh, get some great products. I'm not discounting uh, being in your home or being in a commercial building at all. Actually, one of my best, one, one of my great friends has a studio in his home, and it, dude, he puts out some great records in this in this studio. Uh, it, it's awesome. Okay, so I, I want you to do your research. The first thing is do your research. Find out what you want what you need, what you have to have, and what you'd like to have, and then decide the priorities of that, okay? Figure out which pieces that you want, which pieces that you need. Like, you know you need a microphone, you know you need a computer, you know you need a DAW. Um, what you don't really need is, do you really need an analog console? Do you really need an an uh, a, a digital controller for your DAW? Do you really need the biggest, baddest-ass computer that you can find? Um, the answer to those is, doesn't matter. It's all up to you. Um, you've got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget, so try to stay within your budget. Okay, so that's the thing. So first thing is do your research. Find the gear that will be best for your studio workflow. Um, let's say that you're a commercial studio and you're having clients come in. You're having other engineers come in and work on your system as well. You might want to make that system as simple as possible for multiple engineers to work with. You, at that point, you're going to need um, you're going to need extra plugins. So you got to keep this in mind as well that a lot of different engineers like a different reverb when they're when they're recording vocals. Um, a different producer might want to have a different type of uh, sampler available. Um, he might need a he might need a keyboard controller to control some software synths uh, while he's making some beats or whatever whatever. Um, depends on the genre of music or the type of music or the 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 niche of music that you're working on as to depend on what microphone you might need. Um, you, you have your favorite that you like, but it might not serve all of your clients that actually come in. Look, if it's just you in your studio, dude, you can work on whatever DAW you want. You can use whatever instruments you have available. You can use whatever microphone you have to get your style, to get your music done. So that's entirely up to you. Um, I, I, I have some, some producer friends that work strictly in Luna. I have some other producer friends that work strictly in Logic. Um, uh, uh, multiple people that I know work in FL. Um, they're, they're just creating their music using um, FL Studio or whatever. Uh, Ableton Live is another one that, that a lot of people are using. So it kind of depends on what you're doing, your genre, what you like to do. So all of you are going to be different. I can't really tell you, oh, you have to have Pro Tools. Oh, you have to have this. I can't really say that because it's not true. Um, you get to decide what it is you want and you put it in your studio, okay? Um, again, try to stay within that $150,000 budget. This is the fun part of the exercise, is trying to stay within that budget, okay? So search around different websites that sell pro gear. Um, a couple of them that come to mind are Sweetwater. They're great. Uh, I deal with them a lot. I have a local guy that I like to use. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this as well, because um, I, last week we talked about uh, uh, how to actually how to actually pay for your studio without a lot of money up front. Um, uh, basically, you can use a leasing service. There are specific leasing companies that deal strictly with uh, entertainment companies, uh, production companies, uh, studios, basically. Um, and if you need something for that, they, they're more, they're better at understanding our needs and what we kind of need and how we need to pay for stuff and things like that. So there, 
uh, last week's video, if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it here. You got, I'll actually put a link to it in the YouTube description so you guys can go down in case you missed that when you go get that one as well. It's a great PDF. There's some great information in that PDF that you can download. Um, it's called the Studio Growth Formula. Uh, I'll make that available today as well. So, um, so uh, a couple of other sites for used gear. Some sometimes used or vintage gear is um, is really highly. I love it. I mean, I've got some in my in my studio. I've got some Neve preamps from 1972. Uh, I've got some microphones that were you know from. Uh, I've got a couple of microphones from the 50s. It's just a lot of it. It, it just matters. I mean, for me, it makes a difference. Um, I like vintage gear. I, I, I appreciate vintage gear. It just has a particular feeling when I get to use it. Uh, yeah, uh, look, the new stuff's great. I'm not getting mad at that. But at the same time, you you, you, you know, uh, I like vintage stuff. So I, I do, I personally like the vintage stuff. You don't have to. Um, I'm, I'm a guy that likes to be out of the box. Uh, I like an analog console. I like uh, outboard preamps. I like real microphones and real preamps, real compressors. Um, although I don't mind the box, I don't mind being in the box as well. So, um, there's it, it, dude, you just do it the way you do it. And this is the fun part about this exercise is that it is strictly for you. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with your friends. It has everything to do simply with what you want and what you need in your studio. That's what makes this a lot of fun. So the next thing, um, it, it, the, some of the used sites, I'm sorry, some of the used sites that you might want to look at is reverb.com and vintage King. Uh, Vintage King is pretty good about getting used gear and, and refurbishing it, making sure that it's in good shape and then selling it back, selling it again. So um, they're pretty good about that. Of course, Reverb.com is, uh, you know, they're pretty good about buying and selling used gear. So if you need to buy something used, if you want to buy something used, Reverb.com is a great place to look. Okay. So um, again, you decide if you want to stay in the box or you want to be outside the box, it's entirely up to you. Um, if you like working on an analog console, such as myself, um, get an analog console. If you want to just stay in the box and completely uh, in the computer, that's totally fine. Let's say uh, also another alternative is to get a summing mixer where it's kind of the best of both worlds. You stay in the box yet you can come out of the box to print your analog audio. You run your stems through the through the summing mixer and, and now you're touching on analog. So there are just tons of ways to do this and this exercise gets you thinking about all those things that you can do. So it just kind of helps you Build what you want and what you think you need in your studio to make your studio as um, more most efficient for you and how you, your workflow. So that's what it's all about. It's not necessarily about um, uh, the best of the best. Um, yeah, you can buy the best of the best stuff and and spend all your money on on the best of the best gear. But you know, if, is that what your clients want? Is that what you really need? Do you really need those things? It's entirely again. These are entirely up to you. So you decide, um, you know you're going to need a computer. You know you're going to need an interface to get your audio into the computer. Um, you know you're going to need a microphone to get that sound into, you know, if you're doing vocals, you're going to need a microphone to get the vocals into your computer. There's a, a lot of things that you know you need. Um, so with the computer, I mean, you decide whether you are whether you like Macintosh or whether you like PC. Um, that's, that's all entirely your opinion and how you like to work. All, I mean, any computer is going to do a great job. It's irrelevant. Um, some some do a little bit better. Some some work with PCs. PCs work a little bit better with, say, Fruity Loops or FL. Um, Macs, of course, you you know you can't run Logic on a PC. So if you're going to run Logic, you have to have a Mac. Um, I personally am a Mac guy. I'm just saying. Um, and I you know we run Ableton Live. I actually have FL on 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 the you know on on a couple of our computers here at the studio. But um, we we we're a commercial studio, so we have to have things that are um, acceptable to a lot of people. Like our plugin list, man, our plugin list is huge because there's so many people that like this particular EQ or this particular reverb or that particular d uh, delay, whatever. We just got a crap ton. I've probably got, you know, 200 equalizers and I use one. It's just, you know, it's kind of ridiculous, man. Um, so, yeah, don't forget about microphones. You know, you're going to need microphones. Also, when you're talking about microphones, you're going to need stands, you're going to need cables. You're gonna need um, a way to hold that microphone onto the stand. Do you want a shock mount? Do you want, dude? The list is just—it's gonna grow very quickly. Now, keep in mind, you only have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to spend with this exercise, so uh, just understand that. So this kind of helps you keep within your budget, and it also kind of helps keep your thought process going on what exactly you need in your studio. You know, this isn't designed to um, 
This isn't designed to be like a, the perfect wish list for the biggest studio ever in the world. This is for you and your workflow. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, don't forget um, when you're talking about when you're talking about buying uh, microphones again. You, you you know you're gonna need stands as well as cables, but also pop filters. You, you know, there's there's just tons of stuff that you know you're gonna need. Also, um, just as important as the speakers that you have in your studio is the room treatment. Um, this room that I'm in right now is not really treated for um, for production. Uh, this room is a podcast studio. Um, we, we actually, this is, we are a commercial studio and this is a commercial podcast room. There is a system. There's a uh, Pro Tools and Logic and uh, Ableton and FL and Luna. There's all kind of stuff on there. That, that is an Apollo interface. Um, it's a Apollo twin. So we, you know, we can do a couple of things in here. Uh, the video, you know, we got a lot of cameras in here and stuff. And um, some of the audio, we actually have a Rode, um, a Rode, podcaster uh, procaster machine that the odd this audio is actually running through which is pretty dope for for podcasting it's awesome because you don't really have to think about much it's got the eq and the dynamics already built in so it's pretty dope um so that's another thing you might think about okay what are you going to be doing in your studio are you strictly uh producing music or are you strictly recording editing and mixing music are you doing podcasting are you doing uh you bringing in singers you are you gonna have a full band do you need do you need band equipment do you need drums? Do you need basses? Do you need guitars? Are you a guitar player? Do you need extra amps, a bunch of different kind of amps? Dude, there's so many things that you have to think about while you're doing your music. You know what I mean? While you're, while you're creating your studio. You are building your studio. So this is very personal. Um, and that's why it's just a fun exercise because it's kind of like a wish list. You're kind of building your studio the way that you want your studio to work, whether you're commercial or simply working on stuff you know, in your spare time in your bedroom. It's entirely up to you. Um, that's what makes this exercise a lot of fun, right? Uh, don't forget about startup costs, man. You're gonna need um, you're gonna need startup costs for you need a website. Um, you're gonna need um, maybe some social media marketing. Um, you might need some help with that. Um, you're gonna need to um, register your business as a DBA or an LLC. Uh, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother conversation which we can have some other time. But there's a lot of things that you need to have for that. Um, if you're dealing with uh, if you if you're making money. At, in your studio, any kind of money in your studio, um, you should have some way to protect that money and not have to pay, uh, you know, a, there are ways that you can offset having to pay extra income tax on the money that you make from your studio. Even if you have a regular job, you can still offset your tax bill from making any money you make in your studio. You can offset your tax bill by the things that you buy for your studio. Um, and that's, a whole, again, this is another whole conversation. But these startup costs you'll need. You'll need to understand the startup cost, which is the, um, you know, registering your company, uh, registering your business, um, any licenses that you might need to have. You'll need to check with your local, your local area, um, your local county, city, and you know, government contracts or whatever those kind of things. You'll have to check into that on your own, um, wherever you live, because they're, everywhere's different. I'm I'm in California, and it's 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 definitely different here in California. Um, and we deal with it. You know, it's okay. Um, you're going to also need to understand where you're going to be placing your studio in your house. Um, is it in your home? Is it, are you going to get a commercial spot? I mean, is, do you need an air conditioner in the room? Um, you know, there's, there's so much stuff that you have to actually think about. And this exercise helps you think about all of that stuff that you might need. That's what this, that's why it's an exercise because you're going to be built basically building your own studio, wherever it is and whatever kind of studio that it is. Um, don't forget that you're going to need marketing for your studio. Uh, you're going to hire somebody to help you with marketing. Maybe you're fortunate like I do and have a partner that helps you with the marketing of your studio and the marketing of your business as a studio. Um, so there's that. I mean, don't forget to, um, don't forget that you're going to need that man. And, um, Hey, maybe you're handy with websites and things like that. And you can build your own. There, there are tons of, and we've gone over this in the studio growth formula last week that there's tons of, uh, tons of free places to host your website. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on hosting. Um, what about um, accepting credit cards as your studio? You want people to be able to pay you for your services, right? So you're going to need a way to, for people to pay you. Dude, there's tons of free. There's PayPal. There's Venmo. There's, uh, the, the, you know, the Cash App. There's just all kinds of free ways that people can pay you, um, you know, even using their credit cards. So you don't really have to have Square Up is a great one for, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, cl accepting credit cards for your business. Um, but so is PayPal. They're all about the same price. I think they're 2.9% of the transaction plus 25 cents for each 
thing, whatever. You got to look into that, but that's also some of the money that you need to think about. This part of the budget that you need to think about. Okay. So there's just tons of things that you have to think about for this stuff. Okay. So keep in mind that, um, that that's some of the things you have to do. Um, uh, dude, um, while you're actually thinking about this stuff, write it down, write these things down. Okay. I want this microphone. Okay. I want, I want to have a console. Okay. I want to have this computer. I want to have this and you can't go, yeah, there's no reason to go big on on all this stuff. I mean, if, if you've already got a laptop and that's working for you right now, Use that until you absolutely have to have something else. So you can use the money you, that you were going to spend on a new computer for, a, say, a cool microphone or something, you know, something you could actually use to make your money. I mean, and this is another thing you need to think about, too. And let's refer back to the studio growth formula from last week. Um, these things go hand in hand. Um, the, this build exercise and the studio growth formula from last week. This also gives you the idea of how much things are going to cost. And then the studio growth formula gives you an idea on how to actually implement that and to acquire this gear for your studio. So it's just a lot of fun. These things are just fun to do. Hey, um, enjoy this. Have a good time with this. Take your time. There's no reason to rush through this. Just enjoy it. Take your time. Write things down. I find that when I write things down, it, it kind of solidifies it and makes it more true for me. Um, you can do it however you want, man. I, I, I sometimes do just a, you know, just a word doc in, in, in my Google docs or something, or, or I actually write it down on a piece of paper in my phone, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, my notes in my phone, whatever I'm actually have a, actually have a tablet. That's what I'm looking at right now. I got notes on a tablet. So I, I'm pretty good about writing things down because then I, I, I it kind of solidifies things and makes things real for me. So write this stuff down, man. Just, just get it done. And it's just a lot of fun, okay? Just have fun with this exercise and enjoy it. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, yeah, I'll put my email address right here. It's info at learnprorecording.com. Again, my name is Donnie B, and I am here to be your mentor. I'm here to be your coach. If you ever need anything, just reach out to me at info at learnprorecording.com. I am here for you, my friend, and enjoy the exercise and have a great week. I'm going to talk to you guys again, probably Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, look out for the new blog post. I'll talk to you guys on the blog post this week. Okay. So have a great time, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget um, the Learn Pro Recording Audio Engineering 101 course is available. It's out there now. So go grab it. Go check it out. Enjoy it. If you feel like, if you got any questions about that, let me know. Just reach out to me. Again, it's info at learnprorecording.com. My name is Donnie B, and I am out. Peace.